Labour and National jointly announced they will change the Resource Management Act so that three homes up to three storeys can be built on most sites in the five fastest growing cities without the need of resource consent. What's going on everybody is Blandon here again from Mortgage HQ. This is the second part of our three part series on the three major influence on the property market. Now it's all over the news, property prices have surged upwards, building consents are at the highest level that they have ever been. And with these current market conditions, should you still invest in properties? So a quick recap on the three major influence of the property market. We have short term demand, which is affected by the monetary policies such as interest rates. Medium term, we need to consider what the housing supply is going to look like. And for the long term growth, we want to consider economic and population growth. In this video, we're going to cover the second major influence, which is the housing supply. And we will break this down into three parts as well. And if you stay till the end, I'll share a little bit of my thoughts on what is going on with the market and whether or not you should still look at investing. And remember, if you find value, to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. Now, Economics 101 states that when supply decreases, where demand stays the same, prices will increase. This is exactly what we have been seeing in the property market. There is a massive shortage in listings, dampening the overall supply. And because of lower interest rate, we have actually seen demand go up. And if you put the two together with low supply and high demand, you have the perfect storm for massive price surges. Across the board for major cities, we have seen 20% plus in capital gains in the last 12 months with Sutherland, Hawke's Bay and Manuatu actually experiencing 30% plus in gains. The lower interest rates actually further lower supply. Since it's a lot cheaper for people who own properties to actually just keep holding on to them and buy more properties using that same equity, or just hold on to the investment because it's now cheaper and they've got a higher cash flow. In saying that, we can expect that the supply will go up because interest rates have now gone up really quickly. It's sort of sitting in the mid 3% and it's gone up from the low twos in just the span of the last eight months. Government along with the central banks have also implemented new rules to make it harder for investors, such as taking away the tax deductibility rule on investment property mortgages. Now this will effectively increase the risk taken when you take on an existing property as an investment because the cash flow is going to be lower. And along with the increase in supply, this will effectively increase the risk of taking a property investment that is highly leveraged because it's going to increase the cost and decrease the cash flow that you'll get from it. Because of this, I expect there will be more listings on the market, increasing the overall supply, and we could potentially see a slowdown in the property market prices. Now, the second aspect that we need to consider are the new planning rules to be implemented. The two major political parties have agreed that they want planning to allow for more houses to be built. A PWC report done with Sense Partners estimated that we could see between 50,000 to 100,000 of new houses being added to the market in the next five to eight years. They forecast that the house inflation will definitely be significantly lower due to this. This is great for first home buyers and also great for property investors that own a lot of land because we'll definitely see an increase on a lot of this land that will allow for new houses to be built on. But of course, not everybody is getting an upgrade. Since they're only making some of the less developable land to be more viable for building, land that can already build three stories won't be getting much of this benefit. In fact, they now have more competition and might slow down the growth of those properties. However, in saying that, the bigger challenge at hand that we have is that there is a lack of infrastructure because I have personally seen a whole street where there are lots of good parcels of land but no developers want to pick those up because you can't get stormwater or wastewater connections to develop those land. And that sort of leads us into the third point of housing supply. It's very important to pay attention on where the government is spending money on infrastructure because where the money goes, the capital gains will follow. And historically, there is a high correlation between government spending on certain suburbs, on amenities and infrastructure, and the future capital gains it experiences. Just to give an example, if you're from Auckland, you can check out websites like 
Panuku Developments to find out exactly where the council is going to be spending money to expand. And on this website, you'll be able to find that there is a bit of money being spent in Pamua and it has experienced a massive capital growth in just the last five years. Now, Pamua, if you're not from Auckland, is not known for its school zones. In fact, it is right next to two of the biggest suburbs that is quite dominant by New Zealand housing. What it does have going for it though, is the transport such as a train station, and it's very close to Sylvia Park, one of the biggest malls in New Zealand. Now also there's a work in progress busway that directly connects to East Auckland. And on the Panuka website, you'll find that there are also an upgrade coming to the major town center and the community hub itself. A recent property that was sold in Pamua 19 Dunkirk is just slightly under 1000 square meter. It's on a flat piece of land and it's sold recently for a whopping $3.75 million. And if you look at the 2017 CV, it was only 1.7 million. Now a good chunk of this capital gains would definitely have come from the inflation we have experienced due to COVID and the massive money printing that we have seen. But I would say a good portion of this growth can be attributed to the future growth of this whole suburb itself and the government spending that is about to be poured in. And saying that, what should we make of all this? Just a little bit about my thoughts. Supply is about to increase significantly due to RMA changes and interest rate increasing so that people are more likely to sell. With the government allowing for a lot more high density housing and the Reserve Bank putting a break on the economy, we are very likely going to see a slowdown in property prices. But I don't believe there will be a price drop, but we won't be seeing the gains that we have experienced in the last 18 months. And when you think about inflation, property is actually one of the better vehicles to hedge against inflation. It's also a great way for you to borrow money and allow it to just erode over time. So if you decide to invest, cash flow management is still going to be key. And if you could choose suburbs where you understand there are future money to be poured in to expand its infrastructures and amenities, this will definitely reduce your liquidity risk. So there you have it, folks. If you found value, definitely smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe. Hit the notification bell if you want to see the third parts of the series where we're going to explore the topic of population and economic growth. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.